From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line on this Tuesday. I am Nick Barris. We're here on The Plus, and we've got a topic we're going to be talking about that I think you've probably been seeing in the news, the newspapers online for the past several days, the whole situation in Ukraine right now. And, uh, you know, it always makes huge news when a plane goes down. It's an even bigger story when a plane is shot down. And what I'm talking about here is not a military plane, but a commercial airliner. And by now, of course, you all are very aware of the fact that uh, it's a huge, huge story right now with the Malaysian Airlines jet that was downed in the Ukraine. What's happening now with the, the Russian troops, uh, the, uh, the folks there that may or may not have been responsible for shooting it down, and the role now that the U.S. is going to play, along with the U.N., in investigating how this all went down and, and getting to the bottom of it. Um, the number is 737-7587. You're invited to join in the conversation as we talk this morning if you have questions as you followed the story along with many of uh, the rest of us. But uh, we're going to talk about it with someone I think who can bring some unique perspective because this is really part of his specialty over as a professor at Vanderbilt University. Thomas Schwartz, good morning to you, morning. sir. Thank it's you. good to see you as always. And uh, of course, uh, you teach a, a variety of classes over the past 24 years at Vanderbilt, international relations and, uh, and, and those types of things. This certainly right in your wheelhouse. And uh, I guess the very latest, we've seen the images in the newspaper and on the news this morning of uh, the pro-Russian separatist soldiers apparently, you know, turning over these black boxes, which actually turn out to look kind of orange, yes. but the recording devices from the airplanes and more cooperation. But let me ask you this, Professor, um, right off the top. When you first saw this happen, obviously you knew it was going to be a big story, but as we've seen it develop, what is your takeaway right now from it, big picture? Well, big picture, I think it's, it's, it's something that was in many ways bound to happen. Um, there's been a civil war going on, or at least a, a violent conflict in the eastern Ukraine. Uh, it started, it's, it's got roots way back. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Ukraine is a, a complicated country coming out of the, the breakup of the Soviet Union. There are minority Russian speakers, particularly in the east, who would have rather been part of Russia than the Ukraine. Uh, they also um, dominated in the Crimea. Uh, there was a whole controversy about the Ukraine wanting to become closer to Europe. Russia was trying to prevent that. Um, Russia annexed the Ukraine or uh, the Crimea back in March, uh, forcibly. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, this war has been going on now in the eastern Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian government had been bombing and ta carrying out military maneuvers there. The Russian separatists supplied and helped by Russia uh, been receiving military equipment, in particular these missile launchers. And these and are the separatists this, yeah. that are on behalf of Russia. They want Ukraine to remain part of Russia. They would like the eastern part to separate and become and they, close and part of Russia. Okay, and in this yeah. area where the plane was shot down, there had been a lot of activity. Yes. Um, that they, they had been targeting planes mm -hmm. in this area, which because of that, satellite technology and everything else was kind of zeroed in on. One of my questions when you sat down, it was so interesting, was how did we or investigators know so quickly that this plane certainly was shot down by a missile? Well, I think both we have been observing the area because it okay. is a hot area of conflict, right. satellite imagery, uh, people on the ground who are, are there, but we've also been intercepting communications. One of the most important clues came right away from the intercepted communications of the separatists themselves talking about shooting down a plane. Mm -hmm. And in fact, mm -hmm. as, uh, as you may know, they bragged about it very quickly on Twitter that they had shot down a plane and then took that down when they realized back. it was a civilian jet. Okay, so your belief is that they weren't... They, they, their desire was to shoot down maybe a military cargo or something yes. like this, yeah. and they made a mistake and shot down a commercial plane? I mean, how do you do that? Well, I think this is part of the area where the investigation would, would need to go. I mean, making mistakes in big organizations and also with weaponry like that is, is certainly possible. Okay. The separatists themselves are loosely run by Moscow. They're, the, the basic point is to cause disorder and uh, unrest for the Ukrainian government to try to deal with. Um, they are not particularly, they may not be particularly careful. They see planes. They want to shoot right. down Ukrainian right. planes. Um, it may have been an accident waiting to happen. Uh, we don't know fully about it. I think what we do know, though, is that this was a, um, uh, uh, something that happened 
um, in an area and by people who were with the support of the Russian government. That's what I think we really And do you know. say that because, first of all, this is not something that just you or I can pick up a shoulder rocket launcher and take down a plane. Rockets, no. the, this required some training. Talk about the type of devices you understand it that was likely used to take it down. These were uh, 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 what are called Buk missiles. They, they um, showed them being transported on heavy uh, uh, trucks as they were being taken out, actually, of the Ukraine. We've seen some film of that already. Mm -hmm. They require a fairly sophisticated sophisticated um, understanding of technology, the, the technology involved in tracking planes and uh, calculating, um, targeting, targeting all, all of that. And uh, it's thought that that meant that they must have been either manned by Russian, trained Russians, or people who people came across the border working for the Russian security services. Um, that's, I think, fairly likely. Uh, it is not, in, in that sense, it's not like the shoulder-fired uh, SAMs that were used, for example, by Afghan mm -hmm. uh, militias that's what against I had in the my Soviet mind. helicopters. Right. No, no, those have to, that, uh, planes have to be flying at a much lower altitude. These are more sophisticated, and undoubtedly they were by, uh, to be used against against uh, high-flying Ukrainian bombing uh, runs. And that. Okay. In Russia, then, do you believe, if that was the case, that the Russians were involved, obviously, maybe at very least providing this weapon? <laughs> uh, did Vladimir Putin know about this, you believe, beforehand? No. No, I think okay. what he knows about, of course, is the provi provisioning of these weapons. Yeah. Uh, the the point of these weapons was to cause disorder, to mm -hmm. undermine the Ukrainian government. Uh, I don't think, I honestly don't, I, you know, I, I don't have any uh, take on Vladimir Putin's uh, soul, um, mm -hmm. as the famous quotation yeah. from President Bush went, <laughs> but I don't think he intended to shoot down a civilian airline, and that would not have been in his interest. Um, it's a PR nightmare for it's him. It's a PR nightmare. So, in that sense, it only unites the Europeans in a way that they were certainly not over the annexation of the Ukraine, and um, it makes the likelihood of further sanctions at least um, uh, possible there this today. I see. Is there any significance to the fact that yesterday the United Nations Security Council, they, they vote, and we see this, the Security Council takes actions in events like this to unanim unanimously agree for an international investigation into what downed it. The Russians mm -hmm. even voted. They're, of course, part That's of the right. council, and they voted in support of it. So what significance is there to that, if any? What does that provide? Well, what I think it does, it, it shows that world opinion is quite strongly moved um, and does believe that there is a real problem here, uh, that this is something that cannot be swept under the rug. On the other hand, in fact, the Russians voted for it. It buys time for them. Uh, to uh, perhaps get a different type of story out there to, to um, at least show that they're being cooperative. Again, it goes to Putin's somewhat double game. On the one hand, a conciliatory stance toward the rest of the world. On the other hand, pretty tough line internally. I mean, uh, most of the, the knowledge internally that the Russians have, have presented is a lot of disinformation to their own people about the Ukrainian government shooting down this jet and the rest and, and spreading rumors about a Ukrainian right. jet and that. that. So it, 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 it is, I think, a, a part of a, a, of a complicated game that Putin's play. All right, listen, we're going to take a break. Before we do that, let's squeeze in one phone call. As I said, if you have questions, comments, there's a lot going on with this story, and, and certainly if you followed it, you may have some. Let, let's take a call before we go to our first break with Ed. Ed, good morning. Morning, Nick. Hey, Ed, what's on your mind? I got a uh, uh, like a comment and then a question. Sure. My comment is, is you know, how all the dead bodies are laying out in the fields and stuff, couldn't they get, like, reefer trucks, you know, the trucks that's got air conditioning on it, to get the bodies in there to keep them? Well, you know what we've heard is they, I think they did collect up the bodies and put them onto refrigerated train cars where they've been delivered them. So they, they've tried to put the remains anyway, and how much are full bodies, I don't know. I've, there have been pictures posted online that are just horrendous, just horrendous. But, uh, yeah, so that's one option. They're trying to preserve that through refrigerated rail cars. Okay. My question is, is uh, the F, what is it, uh, whatever the controllers, you know, how come that plane was over a war zone? That's, I don't understand that. Okay, and th I think that's a great question. I mean, you talked about how we knew that there was activity going on there. Missiles were being launched against perhaps other more, you know, military flights. What was the thinking of flying a commercial airliner through this area? Well, the commercial airliner was flying above 30,000 feet. Uh, it was thought that, uh, and certainly the, the, it was clearly identified as a commercial airliner. Mm -hmm. It was thought that no one's going to shoot it down because mm -hmm. of that. Um, it's clearly a case of, 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 um, uh, of, of a lack of imagination that this could have happened. Yeah. But um, other airliners were going through. Um, there's no question that other has that flights... Has now? It has. 
stop I now, but so. other airliners were flying in that area, so it's it's not as if it was, uh, this was in fact an extraordinary coincidence and exceptionally bad luck that it was a Malaysian airliner, but uh, yes, it, uh, I mean, it, 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 there should not, the idea was that it was flying too high to be hit by um, conventional anti-aircraft and thought to be in that sense immune to the war going on below, but clearly wow. that was not the case. And just as we go to the break, um, the, the manifest on board, the, the, the list of passengers on this plane, many of them were Norwegians, I guess, uh, was that it, or um, Dutch. Dutch rather, I'm yes, sorry, Dutch. Dutch. There, there was no one on board that plane that could have been conceived as possibly a, a target no, that they would no, have wanted. No, These no, were no. I think this is folks that were unrelated yeah. in any way. and This is a tragic accident, yeah. um, and undoubtedly, though, the, what you're getting at, and I think is there someone they wanted is, to take is, out. Is, is that yeah. there may be, uh, as a result of this, and some of the gaps in the investigation created by the circumstances, there may be in men, uh, uh, incredible conspiracy theories that yeah. develop as a result of this. Yeah, I was just wondering, but yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you. I haven't heard that there yep. was anyone on board that would have been deemed a target that they would have taken out. It was just mm -hmm. a commercial plane with yep. a mixed bag of folks, a lot of Australians as mm -hmm. well. And uh, what, did they say one American? One American yeah. dual citizenship was Dutch and, and American. That's right. Listen, yep. we'll take a break on that note when we come back. More of your phone calls as we continue to talk about the latest in Ukraine with our guests right after this. Stay with us.